On today's show, it's another one of those what's in the box days. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name's Richard Cleveland. I'm so glad that you're with me this afternoon. On today's show, we are unboxing whatever is in this box. I don't have a clue. It's a plain brown box. It could be money, could be candy, which I like both. It could be soda pop. Oh, this is my share of a bank robbery, apparently. Um, no, this is actually a printer, another printer from our good friends over at Anycubic. And I have a funny feeling, I know what this one is. So this one's going to be a very quick kind of unboxing and putting together. There's not much else to know about what's in this box. But I will say this for Anycubic, even though that they've got a plain brown box, they do pack things really, really well. And it looks like we have got this. So what we've got here is the Anycubic i3 Mega. Inside this badly packed plastic bag, we have the base, which we are going to take out first. There is the base for the machine. Now, the Anycubic i3 Mega is pretty much your standard i3 um, Cartesian-based printer. It's very easy to put together. So what you get in the box is, of course, the printer. You get the gantry. I know it's really tough for you guys to see um, what's going on in this box. But... We also get a roll of filament. This looks like a full 1 kg roll of black filament that they send you. So we don't need that, but we do need this. And there's nothing in that cardboard tube. It's empty. But here is our upper gantry. So we don't need the box anymore. We're going to put that down and off to the side. This machine comes packed with several features. Um, first and foremost, we're going to take a look, before we build it, we're going to take a look at what you get. Of course, you get your power cable. You get a whole bag full of goodies. And inside this bag, they have everything that you need to get started printing right away. We have a beautiful manual, which will go to the upper camera here and show you guys what's going on. Let's make sure what we're on the right camera. There we go. So they have a, a beautiful full color manual in English and it walks you through the steps of putting the machine together. Very simple. Again, it comes with Cura. You guys might remember uh, a while back I talked about the older version of Cura where I did the temperature tower and this is exactly the reason why is because most printers still come with an older version of Cura as their slicing software. So I know a lot of people were upset that I didn't do um, the other uh, particular one but uh, the, or the newer version, which we did a little bit later on, but I, I think that everybody needs to learn Cura, uh, especially if they're new to 3D printing. Now, they've also included what looks like a European club, or club, club, you over the head, um, a European plug, or maybe an Asian plug. We're not going to use that. A heavy-duty scraper, like this thing's got some weight to it. Nice wooden handle on there. We have an extra hot end, basically an E3D clone. Um, what else do we have in here? We have a little bag of tools um, with all the usual suspects. It's got some tweezers in there, some wrenches. Um, it looks like it has a filament sensor here as well. Has all of our screws, everything that we're going to need to put the machine together. 
Comes with an SD card and a micro SD card reader. I don't know why it comes with both, but it looks like it comes with both. Oh, it, oh, I see what they've done here, is they have two SD card adapters, micro SD card adapters in one little bag. There's our usual uh, cable. And they also included another SD card adapter. And, of course, they've got their famous Anycubic filament holder which we're not going to build. It's pretty easy to build. So where do we start? Well, we have to get the screws that we need. This thing takes four screws to put together. That's it. Four on either side, and you're all done, which is actually pretty amazing. Um, because this is a Cartesian-based machine, you'll have seen me in other videos where, you know, I've kind of done the simple thing and just tried to get around doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, read the instructions, dummy. Um, so here we have a filament detection, detect or detector system. We're just going to put that off to the side right now. So here's our screws. Here's our bed. And how you put this thing together is basically you lift up the front and you just basically run that through till you've lined up the holes. And it's going to lean back a little bit until you put your screws in. But once you've done that, this is probably one of the easiest machines to put together. I love this machine. Now you can use the uh, nut driver that comes with it, or, but I'm going to use my own. Um, because, you know, I work better that way. Remember I was talking about tools the other day? <laughs> and why you never put your tools where they're not supposed to be. Because it looks like I've done that yet again. And there is the nut driver that I need. Boom, right there. All right. So let's start. There we go. Let's just line that up, find that hole, this is the tough part right here, there you go, get that hole, get that uh, started, you know I want this to be easy for you guys, but obviously I'm not making it that easy am I, there we go. All right, now when you're putting this screw in, please watch what you're doing and do not cross thread it. Because if you cross thread it, you're going to be in a world of problems. Now I'm not going to tighten that all the way down. I'm going to get another screw set here in the back. I'm going to do the same on the other side before I put the rest of the screws in gets mighty hot in this studio and I start sweating. Whew, it is warm. It's warm in the studio, but you know what? There's still snow on the ground here in Calgary. All right, where are we here? may have to lift that up a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, no, I'm still not grabbing that hole. That's why. There we go. Now we're in there. And we'll do the same on the back side. Now you don't want to tighten these up because you still have more screws to put in, of course. There we go. Now 
now we can start to tighten up those ones that we started with. Now it might be easier for you just to turn this on its side, but really I don't think so. This is going to be one of the fastest unboxings I think we've ever done and putting together. Now I'm going to take these wires and just kind of put them off to the side. Now it's going to be a little bit easier and you can do this. This is not going to hurt the printer. It's not going to knock anything out of alignment. If anybody tells you that it's going to, they've obviously never built a machine before. Now I know I'm going to get a ton of bad press for that. One thing that you want to do, once you get all these screws set, before you plug it in, is you want to make sure that you've got the voltage set correctly. Because these machines, of course, come from China, and the, the sensor, which is, or not the sensor, pardon me, the, let me go to this one here. This right here voltage selection. We're in North America. If you are not in North America and you do not use 110, then make sure that you've got it set properly. But we use 110, so we're going to change that and slide it over to the 110. So now we're using 110 volts, which is what we want for North America. Because if we leave it in the other, we can damage the machine. We leave it on 230, we can damage the machine quite easily. And we don't want to do that. Now this thing comes packed with features, and we're going to talk about those features in just a second. And most of the, most of the, of the time, you know, I would do a print on this printer, but most people have seen what the prints look like off of this, so I don't think most people have ever seen anybody put it together though. Now you can see underneath we have a crossbar and we have four really good feet for this to sit on. This machine sits incredibly level um, all by itself as long as you've got it on you know a fairly flat surface. So now we're going to turn it around. We can see that everything is unplugged here. This side is not unplugged however. This side is plugged in. But we have a plug down here as well that has to be plugged in. And everything is color coded. This is the beautiful part of this. Um, let me turn this on its side over here one more time. We'll go to the upper camera one more time. And you guys can see here, you see how everything is color coded? We have a red, a green, and a black. You cannot muck this up. If you muck this up, then stop 3D printing right now. So we're going to plug the red one in to the red, making sure that all of the tabs line up properly. You'll see that there's a couple of little slots on either side. They match up with little uh, protrusions off of the connector. And that plugs in there. And then the last one here plugs in right here. Boom. There we go. That is now plugged in. You want to see something really cool? I'm going to switch back to here. I just got some sweat on my glasses. It is warm in this studio today, let me tell you. All right, so back here, you have a filament detection center that is, or detection unit that is, get this, watch, magnetic. Isn't that cool? Now that'll sit and move with your filament. Turn that around so you guys can see it. It will move with the filament. See how cool that is? So we have filament detection. We have our print head. We've got our body. You know, here's the simple part. That is now ready to be leveled. The bed's ready to be leveled. You're ready to put your uh, stuff in, or your, your filament in, load some filament, and away you go. So. The Anycubic i3 Mega is a very simple machine to use. It is a Cartesian-based machine. I, was, I don't think I need to do a print on it because it is very easy to use. It's pretty self-explanatory. Let's talk about some of the features real quick. It's got a touch screen. If you watched our, our video on the Photon, it had a touch screen as well. This is a very similar interface uh, to that. You get a lot of extra stuff with this. 
So make sure that you take advantage of it. You've got an extra end stop in there. Um, so you should be good to go for anything that should happen with this machine. Um, it also comes with the any base or the ultra base, pardon me. Once we remove this, we can see that we have the ultra base there. The ultra base means that you don't need to put any type of adhesion on here. So no glue stick, no hairspray, no magic goo, none of that. What you want to do is make sure that you have a level bed, start your print, and let it do what it's got to do. When the print is finished, and I can't stress this enough, when the print is finished, you do need to wait until it is completely cool. Once it has cooled down completely, patience is a virtue, and I know a lot of us are impatient in this hobby, wait for it to completely cool, then that will just pop right off of the build plate and you should be fine. So there is our unboxing and uh, really simple put together of the Anycubic i3 from uh, Anycubic, i3 Mega, there you go. So listen, if you guys like the program, we really appreciate that if you hit the thumbs up down below and uh, give us a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed before and uh, make sure that you hit that bell notification button so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode here on the first layer we do three episodes a week every Monday Wednesday and Friday Monday and Friday of course are our live streams where you get to ask me your most uh, pressing 3d printer questions and uh, if I don't know the answer you can bet I'm gonna find out for you so um, I want to thank all of our patreons uh, without their support, of course, we couldn't uh, continue doing this show. So a big thank you to all of our Patreons that support us. If you'd like to be part of our Patreon group, please go to patreon.com slash the first layer and pick a category that you like. Uh, we have several to choose from. And right now, anybody that is in our, our uh, Patreon campaign or buy me a coffee, uh, and I'll explain what buy me a coffee is in a moment, we're doing a brick campaign where I'm printing a brick with your name on it and a thank you and I'm sending them out as personal messages and we're going to be building a wall of bricks here in the back of the studio. Um, never know what color brick you're going to get. Uh, but we do thank, uh, that's just part of the way that we want to thank our, our, our uh, sponsors. Uh, through patreon.com now buy me a coffee what that is if you're not interested in doing a monthly commitment buy me a coffee is a way that you can still show your support um, and just there you go buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer I want to thank spool 3d because without them I wouldn't have a whole lot of printers to review right now because we are still a fairly young channel and we're not very well known yet but we're getting there Spool 3D, print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. They've got everything that you need from printers to filament to all the accessories and uh, parts that you may need to uh, upgrade or build your own printer from scratch. So that's spool3d.ca. And uh, like we have all the time, well, you know, we've got our producers in studio. Today we have Jess, and Jess has been manning the controls for us, so she's done a fantastic job. Um, of course, I control my cameras, but she does everything else. Um, with that being said, this was really quick. You guys have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again next time. Just remember, the first layer is your foundation to a great print. Until next time, have a great day.